Hey there everyone, I'm Rasen Ryu, but my friends call me Rasen. White Diamond is a fusion, and I will prove it. Steven Universe's season 5 finale will be soon upon us, and there are many glaring questions that still need to be answered. Can corruption be cured? What's in the chest in Lion's Mane? Who, where, or what is White Diamond? The list goes on, and I myself don't believe we'll be getting many answers this season especially with the most recent reveal of Pink Diamond and the trailer for this summer's episodes. Also, this is your one and only spoiler warning. If you're not caught up on the show to this point, stop watching or you might see something you don't want to see yet. You've been warned. Theories abound when talking about Steven Universe, and the one I'll talk about today is no different, except that I'm setting out to prove my theory with factual elements from the show and our real world. I've scoured every corner of the internet, analyzed every episode, listened to every theorist and official podcast, and I am ready to compile my exhaustive research into this video and share it with all of you. Some of you will change the channel, and to be honest, that's perfectly fine. But for those of you who want to know the truth, welcome and stick around. There will be some things you know and some things you may have yet to think about, but overall I hope you find this to be an enjoyable spending of your time. Now, without further ado, let's begin by talking about fusion. First, you need a gem at the core of your being. Then you need a body that can turn into light. Then you need a partner who you trust with that light. Gem fusion is one of the cornerstones of Steven Universe, something that makes this incredible series truly unique and that fans always get excited for when a new one is born, myself included, of course. Pretty much any gem can fuse with any other gem as long as they trust each other enough for the process. And diamonds are no different. The fact that rainbow quartz exists is the proof. We all know by now that rose quartz was pink diamond. Whether or not you agree with it is another matter, but pink diamond was able to fuse with pearl to become rainbow quartz, or should we say rainbow diamond? Now that'll probably be the Steven Pearl fusion. For that matter, Smoky Quartz and Stevani are also proof, and it's speculated that she fused with the other crystal gems, Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl, to become Obsidian. So it only stands to reason that Yellow Diamond and Blue Diamond can also fuse. Now many have speculated that if they can fuse, they would become the combination of their two colors, Green Diamond. This totally makes sense, but I will now propose a different theory on that. It's true that by fusing together, gems can become any combination of colors, as long as they are on the same spectrum as the original gems that constructed the fusion. This has led to Garnet having wildly different color schemes, but there are two ways to combine colors. The subtractive color method, which generally pertains to paints and pigments, and the additive color method, which generally pertains to light. The additive color method is a way to create color by mixing a number of different colors of light, with shades of red, green, and blue being the most common primary colors used in the additive color system. As a reminder, all of a gem's physical body is made up of light, which means that each fusion form should follow the additive color method. Now, what happens when you mix yellow and blue light? Bingo! You get white light. Don't believe me? Well, there's a website that shows this exact outcome. There's also an Android app called the Kids Color Mixer. It's pretty basic, but it displays the additive color method pretty well. I'll leave a link to the site and the app in the description. Of course, that's just the tip of the iceberg. As exciting as color theory is, this is just one piece of the puzzle. White Diamond has a gem on her forehead, and Yellow and Blue have gems on their chests. How does it move like that? Well, it's quite simple, really. For every gem, fusion or not, Whenever they are formed or reformed, their gem stays in the same exact place, but there are a few exceptions. Gems generally cannot change how their gems are viewed by others, but there is one who's broken that rule, Pink Diamond. As we saw in a single pale rose, when Pink Diamond shapeshifts to rose quartz, she changes the orientation of her diamond to simulate a rose quartz, and changes it back when assuming her true form. She has complete control over how her gem looks in either form, but I hear ya, maybe that's just because she's a diamond, right? Well, hold on! 
Shapeshifting is a way for gems to change their physical forms into absolutely anything they want, which means they can move their gems around too. For example, in the episode Onion Friend, we're shown that Vidalia used to make paintings of Amethyst, and in one of those paintings we see that Amethyst has become some amorphous alien looking thing, with her gem in the place of her eye instead of on her chest where her gem is commonly placed. Amethyst is a normal gem, and even if it was for a short period of time, she was able to change the position of her gem through shapeshifting. Can you see where I'm going with this? If we put these two scenarios together for White Diamond, the most supreme of gems, we can easily say that Yellow and Blue Diamond, while fusing, changed their gem's placement and orientation to fit on the resulting fusion's forehead. Eureka! White Diamond's Forehead Gem so where are we now? We've solved who White Diamond is. The question nobody seems to be asking is, where did White Diamond come from? And you're like, I've been asking that question. And I'm like, and right you are to ask, dear viewer, because I've got an answer for you. In the episode Sirius Steven, we see the crystal gems enter the Pyramid Temple and we're shown a mural on the ceiling. There are three images depicted here, and I believe they tell the story of White Diamond. The story being told is shown from right to left, not unlike a Japanese manga. The far right image is what I believe to be the birth of White Diamond. The figure is shown in front of an image of a sun, so it seems that White Diamond was born from a star. That's pretty epic. But wait, I thought White Diamond was a fusion, you may be asking now. Well yes, I'm sticking with that statement. But just because she is a fusion doesn't mean she stays that way. Here's the story. White Diamond, unique in her flawlessness, was born from a star and sought to expand her perfection across the galaxy. She conquered many, many worlds, building her empire along the way. One day, she felt that she could expand even faster if there were more of her, so she splits herself into Blue and Yellow Diamond. Blue and Yellow Diamond decide that in order to expand even further, they would have to make more of the Diamond Authority. So from the ground of some unknown planet, they create Pink Diamond the same way that they create every other gem. Pink Diamond is young and immature, but longs for the day that she can have her own colony to rule, just like her Diamond counterparts. She finally gets a wish and begins colonizing Earth. One day though, Pink Diamond learns of the inhabitants of Earth. She learns to love the planet and no longer wants to sack it for resources. Yellow and Blue Diamond won't listen to her, so she assumes an alter ego, Rose Quartz, and starts to rebel against them. This rebellion lasts thousands of years until one day, Rose Quartz is seen shattering Pink Diamond. Now this is where the middle image of the mural comes into play. Yellow and Blue Diamond, distraught over the loss of Pink Diamond, decide to join the battlefield personally after sitting on the sidelines for the majority of the war. They fuse into White Diamond once again and face Rose Quartz and her army head on, but the rebellion proves to be more formidable than anticipated, which stands to reason since Pink Diamond was at the forefront of it. So as a final strike, White Diamond directs all her troops to flee the planet and lets loose the light of corruption, depicted in the leftmost image of the mural, with all the earth gems reaching out in agony toward the being that did this to them and begging her to reverse it. This reduces the entire rebellion to a mere handful of gems. White Diamond is somewhat satisfied and leaves the planet Earth. Maybe I got a little dark there. Well, you're probably like, Rasen, I have a rebuttal. I know, I know. I left out a few things during the story, so let's back up a bit. As I just went over, White Diamond used her power to corrupt the entirety of Earth gems. It's shown in many flashbacks and memories that White Diamond was there with Yellow and Blue Diamond. But with every flashback, we only see the lights and even the hands of White, Blue, and Yellow Diamond. So what gives? Why am I saying that White Diamond was the only one there? Well, every account of the event was a memory, with Garnet's being the most clear since she was there. But the thing is, memories can be faulty, especially if you don't fully understand what's going on. My guess is that the events in Your Mother and Mine really happened, but not exactly how Garnet told it. Let's go back to the end of That Will Be All, the very end, where we get a shot of Yellow and Blue Diamond's arm ships. Since we already know that these gem ships can change how they appear and how they function, 
we just apply that to the corruption scenario. Suddenly, White Diamond is the only diamond there, and she's using Yellow and Blue's giant ships as sort of limb enhancers, or options for the Gradius fans out there, in order to project the light of corruption over the entire world. Well, that about sums up the who, where, and what is White Diamond mystery. This also explains why we didn't see her at the trial. The answer is, she was there, just not physically. She sees everything through Blue and Yellow Diamond's eyes because she is Blue and Yellow Diamond. But then why? Why has she never been directly mentioned? Ever? Why have we never seen any of White Diamond's court? I have the answer to both of those. Addressing the question of mentioning her. 1. There was no need. The Diamond Authority is all powerful and absolute. They rule over their empire equally to one another, with no hierarchy. So whenever anyone mentions them as a collective, they simply say the diamonds. 2. Gems generally don't mention the name of a gem that isn't currently there. You don't call Garnet, Ruby, and Sapphire, or vice versa. In Malachite's case, everyone knew that it was Lapis and Jasper that formed her, but they called her Malachite all the same. And once again, the diamonds are no different. Blue and Yellow Diamond are Blue and Yellow Diamond. That's all there is to it. Now, why have we never seen White Diamond's court? Two more answers. One, they are all either on Homeworld or on White Diamond's other colonies. They are maintaining the Diamond Empire and its technology and aren't deployed unless absolutely necessary. And when you have an entire force of Yellow and Blue Diamond's court and army, why would White Diamond's army need to be deployed? Two, and this one is kind of an answer to this and the previous question of mentioning White Diamond. Nobody on Earth has seen her army. None of the Earth gems that we know have been to Homeworld, and if they have, they've never had a reason to mention it. Out of sight, out of mind. No White Diamond army. And there you have it. White Diamond is a fusion. Change my mind. I'm really surprised that no one has covered this topic to quite the same degree. I think the evidence speaks for itself, but what do you think? Is White Diamond a fusion or a separate gem that just can't be bothered? Let me know what you think about this theory in the comments or on my social media. Links in the description. Also, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, mash those like, sub, and bell buttons. And you can really ignite the discussion by sharing this video with other fans, and I would really appreciate you for it. On that note, I'm Rasenryu, and I'll see y'all next time.